السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Welcome to another episode of Gems of the Heart where we look and reflect upon what we should do with our hearts how can we purify our hearts as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us it's the joy of this life and it's the best of the rewards in the hereafter no one will enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless they have a sound heart ولا تخزني يوم يبعثون يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم إبراهيم عليه السلام He made this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Do not disgrace me in the day of resurrection When there no wealth nor offsprings will avail and benefit the person Except for those who come with a sound heart So this is our duty on the face of earth Is to purify our hearts To have sound hearts And how can we achieve this? It's basically by following the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are matters of belief, deeds done by the heart, the thing that we say, the things that we do, our relationships, everything that we do in our life affect our hearts. So how can we purify this heart? This is basically what we need to learn in these types of episodes. And we're still in the concept or the principle of belief. How matters of belief, how the aqidah, one's creed, can purify the heart, this is the foundation of any goodness. If a person has the best manners, if a person do all kinds of acts of worship to purify the heart, but one's belief is corrupted, there's no purification. It's nothing but increasing the corruption of the heart. And that's why the foundation is very important and that's why we need to learn our matters of belief and to see even how the matters of belief, the correct aqidah, the correct belief can purify our hearts. And we talked from the very beginning in the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only Lord of the Alameen. And He's the only one worthy of worship subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we've been going through some of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has great effect. It's basically the best effect whatsoever for a person to have a pure heart is to get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He's the purifier of the hearts. And we've been studying or talking about some of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this episode, inshallah ta'ala, we'll talk about the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Kabir and Al-Mutakabbir. They have the same attribute. The name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Kabir, the All-Great, the Most Great, the Greatest, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Most Exalted. Al-Mutakabbir, the Superior, the Supreme, subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we believe in it, uh, the meaning of it? how it's been used in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and how can we purify our hearts with this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll talk about that inshallah ta'ala. And uh, as we always have in every episode, we have a question uh, related to what is being said. So uh, we'll have uh, the question of this episode inshallah ta'ala as we had for the one from uh, last week. And we'll also be waiting for your phone calls inshallah ta'ala for you to share or to have questions related to what we're saying. Uh, the previous uh, question, as you see it in the bottom of the screen, this is from previous week about the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Qadir and the attribute of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, with regards to a dua, supplication, where we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his name al-Qadir and muqtadir al-Qadir. Uh, what is this dua or one dua that is mentioned from the Prophet والسلام, that we use this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, you, throughout this segment, inshallah ta'ala, if you have an answer to this to the Facebook uh, page, and we'll mention that inshallah ta'ala in the second segment of the program, and with the new question inshallah ta'ala uh, to come up by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, first of all, let's uh, really focus on the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Kabir. Uh, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Kabir, the most great, is mentioned in the Quran in six uh, uh, verses. And it talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Al-Kabir, the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does that mean really? Al-Kabir means the most great. And we see that, we, we, we hear it in the adhan, we say it in the salah. Something that as Muslims, we're constantly uh, mentioning this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala that has to have an effect in our hearts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Kabir is the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala. Human beings, they tend to be attached to something that is greater than them. We are all creation of Allah. We are weak. 
We are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by the way, if you even remember from the previous episodes, I'm repeating the same words. I'm saying the same thing. The more we get to know the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we would see how weak we are, how we are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every breath we take in this life. And this is, if this is the only benefit that we get by learning this, this is the great benefit. Why? Because this is the essence of al-ibadah. This is the essence of to be a slave of Allah, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't see in ourselves might or power or anything. We rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We leave our affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala. And nothing is greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, we worship him alone. Therefore, we rely on him alone subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is basically something that shows some of the effects that we will talk about it inshallah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran which shows the meaning of la ilaha illallah. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَقِّ وَأَنَّ مَا يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ الْبَاطِلِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْكَبِيرِ And this is mentioned in Surah Luqman, verse number 30, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed He is Al-Haqq, He is the truth. And what they invoke besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Batil, which is the opposite of the truth, which is falsehood. وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْكَبِيرِ And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Ali, the most high, Al-Kabir, the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, the name here, Al-Kabir, the most great, and he is the most high subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, there is nothing greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we ask ourselves the question, what is taking us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That thing that take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is it greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Another human being, whether it's one's wife, one's husband, uh, some relationship in one's life, wealth, life itself, the enjoyment of this life, sins, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, whatever there is, is it greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take us away from the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala? So that's why we need to reflect. If we say Allahu Akbar many times every day, every time, if we just count it, sit with yourself and count how many times we say Allahu Akbar. If you are a mu'adhin, you are saying that every time you say the adhan. There is four times in the beginning of the adhan and one towards the end of the adhan, twice. So that's six times in each adhan. And if you are a mu'adhin, you're saying it. If you're not a mu'adhin, if you're not someone that is calling people to the prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his favor upon you to be among those who listen to the adhan and you hear the voice, the beautiful voice of the adhan. We are ordered and encouraged to repeat after the mu'adhin. So drop everything that you have whenever the adhan is being called and repeat after the mu'adhin as the Prophet ﷺ ordered us. He said, if you hear the, the mu'adhin saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, then you say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and so on. And that's the first words of the adhan, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala akbar, that means he's the greatest, he's greatest than all things and everything. And the significance of this is, you see that when the adhan is being called, you have to be busy with something, or you're sleeping, or you're working, or you're walking, or you're playing, or whatever the person is doing. Allahu Akbar. It's a beautiful thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than what you're doing. The thing that is taking you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or it might take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that make you lazy to respond to this call, it's nothing because it's a creation of Allah. So you see, you see the context of it. And how beautiful is the religion if we really get things into our heart. That's why one of the early generations of Islam, he will uh, be working with his hammer or something that he's working with his hand and he hears Allahu Akbar, the Mu'adhin. And he had already lifted his hand to hit whatever he's hitting, but he hears Allahu Akbar, he would throw it behind his back. Why? Because he wants to do, he doesn't want to do anything when he heard Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than everything that we are busy with. This is how we understand and react to the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Kabir. That's why he's the only one worthy of worship. When we look at human beings when they worship other than Allah, why they are worshiping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are they these things that they are worshipping besides Allah? Would, would it benefit them in any way or form? Does it have any goodness in them whatsoever? It's all creation of Allah, it's all weak. Whether it's a prophet of Allah that they're worshipping, 
or a tree or a stone or an image or whatever there is amulets whatever people they have their hearts attached to these are nothing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran with regards to those who have their hearts attached to other than Allah one of which in surah Saba verse number 23 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wala tanfa'u ash-shafa'atu 'indahu illa liman adhina lah hatta idha fuzzi'a 'an qulubihim qalu madha qala rabbukum qalu al-haqq wa huwa al-'aliyyu al-kabir al-kabir which means that ash-shafa'a intercession does not benefit uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except for those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the permission to intercede intercession of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the day of judgment for the believers it's only after the permission of Allah nobody owns a shafa'a nobody owns the intercession itself human beings in this life they might have some intercession for one another someone that knows the king or the president or whatever there is so he would go and he would speak to him please help this person please hire that person whatever there is right Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no one would intercede for anyone else except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permit for that to happen and unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with the subject of the intercession the human being and also it's a way to honor the one that intercede for others so the shafa'a does not benefit except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but it also shows which is something that the Prophet ﷺ explained whenever the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes from above the angels they as if they become unconscious because of the power of the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the verse says till they are relieved from the effect of the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes down they would say مَذَا قَالَ رَبُّكُمْ they would say what, is, what did your Lord say قَالُوا الْحَقِّ they would say the truth because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only say the truth and he's the owner of the truth all human beings whatever they say and if they claim it's the truth right they are nothing if it's not coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how would a person know that something is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through the revelation from Allah it's not human beings that Allah is speaking to them as many people they claim this is all ways of corruption because shayateen speaks to people and whispers to them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only speak the truth and the Quran is the final word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So qalu al haq wa huwa al aliyu al kabir. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most high, al kabir, the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is alim al ghaybi wa shahada, al kabir al muta'al. As it's mentioned in Surah al Ra'd, verse number 9, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that knows the unseen and the seen. Nothing, no difference between unseen and seen, future, past, present. Whatever there is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his knowledge is the same towards all of these things. And he is al-kabirul muta'al. He is the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala and muta'al, the most high subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the same verse that we mentioned before in Surah Luqman is mentioned the like of it with slight differences in Surah Al-Hajj. Verse number 62, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَقِّ وَأَنَّ مَا يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ هُوَ الْبَاطِلِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْكَبِيرِ and this verse explains la ilaha illallah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth and what they invoke besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-batil this is la ilaha no one is worthy of worship everything is batil everything is vain everything is is false except the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most high is the most great something that is very basic reason for every human being whenever it comes to the worship of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sadly many of the human beings they worship other than Allah because they don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being al-kabir the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran in surah Ghafir verse number 12 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said ذَلِكُمْ بِأَنَّهُ إِذَا دُعِيَ اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ كَفَرْتُمْ وَإِيُّ يُشْرَكْ بِهِ تُؤْمِنُوا فَالْحُكْمُ لِلَّهِ الْعَلِيِّ الْكَبِيرِ Al-Ali al-Kabir is mentioned together most of the time that for those who whenever other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being called and invoked right if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is mentioned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says kafartum you would disbelieve to the disbelievers whenever the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is mentioned they disbelieve and if they associate partners with Allah then you believe if there is shirk if there is associating partners with Allah فَالْحُكْمُ لِلَّهِ الْعَلَيِّ الْكَبِيرِ the ruling is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and also it's mentioned in Allah kana aliyan kabira indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most high and he is the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter what you think you are great or you have some talents or you have some power that maybe no one on, among all the human beings are in your level Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than you because you are a creation of Allah it's not even in the same context because nothing is the like of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us on the face of earth people have some superiority over others they should never look into themselves as they have some superiority this is just a matter of differences among people if someone is given wealth uh, he should not look at those who are poor that he is superior over them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that bestowed this favor for you he's the one that gave you and provided for you for a reason to test you are you going to be arrogant and think that you are superior and that you are the greatest because you're given money and so on or you're humble yourself humbling oneself towards the poor towards the rights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have in your wealth and so on and so forth so this is also a person when he's humbled to others he is witnessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-kabir and no one is to have arrogance otherwise he is committing a major major sin which is something that we need to talk about because knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being al-kabir the word kibr or arrogance has the same root arrogance is one of the fatal diseases in the hearts of the believer something that can corrupt the hearts of the human being the sin that Iblis shaitan he had in his heart that made him refuse to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam is this kibr that he had this kibr arrogance that he refused to make sujood to Adam alayhi salam because he's been created from fire and Adam is created from mud as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran and because of that sin that the seed of it and the root of it is the kibr is the arrogance he was kicked out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forever the sin of Adam alayhi salam was the desire he was overpowered by his desire and he repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which shows that when a person is arrogant this can be a sign that he might the tawbah or the repentance is more difficult for him why because arrogant people they don't like to accept the truth they don't want to or they think out of their foolishness they think that if they accept the truth which is opposite to what they were saying or believing the day before that they would look weak or would look that they are defeated by their opponents or whatever and this is all signs of weaknesses of one's mind and that's why those who have kibr and arrogance it's a sign as one of the early generations of Islam he said it's a sign of someone that has a deficiency in his reason in his intellect those who are intellect those who are smart they really are humble why because they know themselves they know how they are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on so there are many verses in the Quran as we see talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being uh, al-kabir he is the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala and that people need to humble themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and really uh, seeing this when when we talk about al-kibr and and this is an attribute that is not good for the human being and al-kabir for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the most great this is one of the perfect attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it shows that some of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, we have to have some of these qualities in our human perspective like if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous we need to be also the most generous we need to be generous we need to be generous to others because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful we need to have mercy towards one another and this is one of the things that we learn from the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when it comes to the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-kabir he's the most great right we should not be arrogant we should not think of ourselves being the most great or the greatest or that we are better than others right this is becomes a, a, a deficiency an attribute of deficiency for the human beings because nobody is greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is a great benefit that we need to learn uh, the the issue of arrogance and that's really if we get this benefit from learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being al-kabir to purify ourselves from the seed of arrogance a person might have arrogance in his heart and he doesn't know it uh, just for the fact that I'm speaking now about arrogance I don't think anyone myself or the viewers or anyone would say that I'm arrogant my people usually they 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 stay away they distance themselves from this evil characteristics that means it, it has a dangerous meaning to it that means a person can have his heart full of arrogance kibs and he doesn't know and that's a dangerous thing 
you know, when there's something a person knows about himself and he try to work on himself to uh, eliminate this evil attribute or characteristics, it's a good thing. But what if a person doesn't know? That's why al kibri is one of them. And it is not sufficient or it's not valid for a person to have some arrogance. A person might say, well, I have some arrogance, but not too much arrogance. Right? So that means I'm a good person. I'm still, you know, there's no such a thing. One seed, uh, one small portion of arrogance, as big as a mustard seed in the heart of arrogance, that would make the person enter the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants our hearts to be absolutely pure, away, cleaned from any arrogance whatsoever. And there are many hadiths about this, one of which two of the companions of the Prophet وسلم, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As and Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhuma, and this hadith is in Musnad Imam Ahmad rahimahullah and it's a sound hadith that Abdullah ibn Umar he was uh, sitting by the mount of a safa and Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As came to him and the narrator of the hadith and he's the son of Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiyallahu an he is seeing them from a distance so he saw Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As came and he said with Abdullah ibn Umar, both great companions of the Prophet وسلم, both among the ulama, the scholars of the Sahaba. And he said something to Abdullah ibn Umar, then he left. When he left, Abdullah ibn Umar, he started weeping as a result of what he heard from Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. So the narrator of the hadith, he went to him and he asked him, what did he say to you that once he left, you start weeping? He said that Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, he said, he, he, he said that he heard the Prophet وسلم, saying, من كان في قلبه مثقال حبة من خردل في من كبر كبه الله على وجهه في نار جهنم. Which means whoever has in his heart the weight of a mustard seed of arrogance of kibr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will throw him on his face in the hellfire. So that's why he kind of realized the, the danger of this. That small weight of kibir that a person might not be able to feel it in his heart. That's why it's a duty. It's a duty on us that we really purify ourselves. And one of the ways to do that is to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is Al Kabir. Nothing is greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll go to break inshallah ta'ala and then come back with your phone calls, with the question of this episode, and more with the meanings of Al Kabir. One of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most great, is to stay with us, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome back. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. With the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al Kabir, the most great. Something so beautiful for us to reflect upon. Something that should change our heart. Uh, and we really, whenever, uh, sometimes you read or you get to know a hadith of the Prophet, وسلم, whenever the companions of the Prophet وسلم, would hear something, uh, sometimes one statement only would be sufficient for them to change their entire life. So the same thing when it comes to get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His names and attributes. How can that affect our hearts? How can it purify our hearts? And how can it take away all the kibr and the arrogance of someone feeling that he's so great? So great in an evil context, of course. We have to think good about ourselves, but rather thinking good about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide us, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect us. And this is how the believers, they always refer and rely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they know that anything that good happened to them, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore they seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that also shows the effect of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the most great in our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We talked about how many times a day we say Allahu Akbar. And this is something for us to really reflect upon this. Every time you get to say Allahu Akbar, uh, try to pay attention to this, whether it's the Adhan, whether it's be in the beginning of every Salah, we say Allahu Akbar, and this is one of the pillars of the Salah, is to say Allahu Akbar, to start the Salah. This is what separates uh, everything else from the Salah. As the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Tahrimu at takbir that what makes haram that was permissible before is Allahu Akbar. Before you say Allahu Akbar in the Salah, you can eat and drink and talk and so on. But once you said Allahu Akbar, that's it. This is not permissible for you to speak to anyone. It's not permissible for you to eat or to drink or to do anything. Absolutely focusing on matters of the Salah, humbling oneself and having the devotion and the focus on the Salah. And what started that devotion is by saying Allahu Akbar. 
And that's why this is the first thing that the Prophet ﷺ used to say, as it's mentioned in Sahih Muslim, the first word that the Prophet ﷺ would say in Salah is Allahu Akbar. And the significance of that. This is something very important for us to reflect upon. And then you might say it in the Salah as we heard some verses of the Quran talks about this. And even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Quran wa kabbirhu takbira. Make takbir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is akbar, is greater than everything. The same thing you say it when you go for ruku' when you go for sujood, every move in the salah, we say Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. We keep on saying it. After the salah, the Prophet used to make takbir, used to say Allahu Akbar. And the people would know that the Prophet and the Sahaba finished the salah by hearing the takbir that is being in the masjid. The takbirat of Al-Eid, going to Salatul Eid and making the takbir, and the takbir in the days of a tashriq in the, the, the Eid Al-Adha, and the takbir in the morning and in the evening after each salah, where the Prophet والسلام, taught us to say Subhanallah 33 times, Alhamdulillah 33 times, Allahu Akbar 33 times, before going to sleep, we say Subhanallah 33 times, Alhamdulillah 33 times, Allahu Akbar 34 times. 34 times before going to sleep. So after each salah, you have 33 times you say Allahu Akbar. And then before going to sleep, we say it 34 times. We have the adhan, we have the salah, the fard salah, we have the optional salah, we have the sunnah salah. It's amazing that how many times a day we are encouraged or ordered to say Allahu Akbar. To have the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-kabir purifying constantly our heart as if, and this is something that we need to see. As if if we don't say this, our hearts will be polluted by our arrogance, by our egos, by looking at things that we might think it's so great. Because we see with our own eyes the power of other human beings, the power of nations, the power of technology, whatever people can see. And they would say, wow, this is so great, this is so strong, and so on. It made them forgetful about the power of Allah. That we are basically looking at everything that we see is the creation of Allah. Who's the one that created all of this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever you see a human being that has so much great powers and so on, we should see, say Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest. He's the one that created all of this. To the extent of which that the Prophet advised and ordered the one that is traveling, whenever he would go on a hill or some uh, uh, slope that he's driving or walking or riding, he used to advise him with takbir ala kulli sharaf. Make takbir, say Allahu Akbar every time you're going higher. Why? Because you might have your heart feels that you're higher or you're some form of a great person or so. Say Allahu Akbar. Remind yourself, humble yourself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest. To that extent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to remember the name Al-Kabir and the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the most superior subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, a Bedouin came to the Prophet ﷺ in this hadith in Sahih Muslim. He came to the Prophet والسلام, and he said, O oh Prophet of Allah, teach me words to say. It's a beautiful thing to ask the Prophet. ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said to him, Qul, say, La ilaha illallah wahdahu, la sharika la, Allahu akbaru kabira, walhamdulillahi kathira, subhanallah rabbil alameen, la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al aziz al hakim. Which means, say, La ilaha illallah, there's no one worthy worship of Allah except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wahdahu, he's the only one. La sharika la, he has no partners. Allahu akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most great. Kabira, Allahu akbaru kabiran. He's the most, he's the greatest. Kabiran, he is the most great. Walhamdulillahi, kathiran. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one to be praised kathiran a lot. Subhanallah rabbil alameen. To glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the Alameen. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no might, no power except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, the most wise subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this Bedouin said, فَهَاُلَاءِ لِرَبِّي فَمَالِي He said, this is to my Lord, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's for me? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, قُلْ اللَّهُمَّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَرْحَمْنِي وَهْدِنِي وَرْزُقْنِي The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him to make dua, say, oh Allah, forgive me, have mercy on me guide me, provide for me. And it always shows that how when we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you humble yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more likely the dua and the supplication is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Also the hadith in, in Sahih Muslim, and this is also a, a beautiful hadith where uh, the Prophet sallallahu wasallam, as Abdullah ibn Umar, he said, we were sitting praying with the Prophet sallallahu wasallam, and a man from among the people, he said, Allahu Akbar kabira, walhamdulillahi kathira, wa subhanallahi bukrata wa asila. And this is Sahih Muslim, authentic hadith. A man said, Allahu Akbar kabira, Allah is the most great and the greatest, I mean, to make the word the greatest word to be said. Walhamdulillahi kathira, and praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot, wa subhanallahi bukratan wa asila, and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the morning and in the evening. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, man al-qailu kalimata katha wa katha. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, who's the one that is saying such and such where we just heard? So a man from the people, he said, ana rasulullah, me O Prophet of Allah, the Prophet ﷺ said, عَجِبْتُ لَهَا فُتِحَتْ لَهَا أَبْوَابُ السَّمَاءِ Prophet ﷺ said, I was amazed of what you said because the gates of the heavens were opened because of, the, of what you said. The Prophet ﷺ, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows him to see the unseen. We can say many things and we don't see the unseen. So imagine, this is something the Prophet ﷺ saw, that the gates of the heavens were opened by what this man said, which is, Allahu Akbar Kabira. Walhamdulillahi kathira wa subhanallahi bukratan wa asila. Very simple words. The gates of the heavens are opened. So Abdullah ibn Umar he said, Fama taraktuhunna mundu sami'tu Rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yakudu dhalik. He said, I never left these words once I heard them from the Prophet. I constantly say them. And this is what we just said. One statement from the Prophet, one incident, one hadith was sufficient for them to change their life, to continuously to do what they heard, and not once in a while. And that's a test for us. If you just heard this, right, why can't we just be frequently and constantly saying this for the rest of our life, seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something beautiful to see, to see, to show how that saying Allahu Akbar, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest, not just in the salawat, in the prayers, and in the adhan, and before going to sleep, and after the salah, but also in general terms like this, or saying Allahu Akbar, and so on. And this is by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, why? Because again, no one will enter Jannah if he has the weight of a mustard seed in his heart of arrogance and kibbs. Right? We have to humble ourselves, and the more we say Allahu Akbar, and these types of hadith, the more that we humble ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Mutakabbir, and this is mentioned in Surah Al-Hashr. Towards the end of Surah Al-Hajj, Allah subhanahu, Al-Hashr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, said, Huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa huwa al-maliku al-quddus al-salamu al-mu'minu al-muhaymin al-azizu al-jabbaru al-mutakabbir. Subhanallahi amma yushrikun. And Al-Mutakabbir, if a human being is called al-mutakabbir, this is an evil attribute, arrogance, right? That, that person has so much pride and he's arrogant. But what al-mutakabbir means, right, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means he's the most superior. He's above all. He's the greatest subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody can ever uh, have any uh, of the greatness except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's all limited and deficient and it's given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-mutakabbir and that's why we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful but it's not the like of what a human being that people think of a mutakabbir. That means someone that is arrogant, someone that is foolish. This is all for the human beings. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the most high, He is the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we need to witness with our own hearts, to purify our hearts with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most beloved words to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet sallallahu said, is subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. And he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, la yadurruka bi ayyihinna badat. It won't harm you with which one uh, should you say first. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. And this is how we make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu said, it's more beloved to me than what the sun have risen over. Meaning more beloved to the Prophet sallallahu than the entire world and whatever it contains. Is to say, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. And uh, if we go you know, through these hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we would find many of these hadith. Great hadith from the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam. Great meanings that should bring this uh, purification of the heart.
and not just to the Muslims really something that we should remind everyone it's something that you can use in your da'wah inviting others to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's a, a beautiful hadith uh, that the Prophet والسلام, he called Adi ibn Hatim and he was a Christian before he was a Muslim and uh, he said Ya Adi ma yufidruk that means oh Adi what makes you flee away from, from matters of Iman what makes you run away from being a believer right uh, and then he said is it that makes you flee away to say la ilaha illallah why don't you say la ilaha illallah why don't you say there's no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do you know fal ta'lamu min ilahin illallah do you know any ilah anyone to be worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the prophet sallam he asked him again what make you flee away or run away from guidance he said to him uh, that you would run away that and you call Allahu akbar that it will be said Allahu akbar when uh, really it's amazing how uh, you know even some of the non-muslims they ridicule the muslims when they say Allahu akbar and they made it an act of uh, you know, making fun of the believers or as a sign of uh, committing uh, evil actions and so on, which is an evil thing from those who commit evil actions, those who terrorize others and those who shed blood, and they unjustly, they would use the beautiful word of Allahu Akbar. This is such an evil thing, of course. But we can also say to those uh, people, you don't like the word Allahu Akbar. If you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and earth, and you claim that you believe in the Lord of the Alameen, the Lord of Jesus, uh, peace be upon him, the Lord of everyone. Why does it bother you to hear Allahu Akbar? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest, is the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something the Prophet sallam said to Adi ibn Hatim. He said to him, فَهَلْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَكْبَرُ مِنَ اللَّهِ Something that we need to reflect upon. He said to him, is there anything greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one that created you would there be any answer uh, really it's an amazing thing and that's why people would say of course not there's nothing greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so who on the face of earth today that says Allahu Akbar who really believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most great who are the ones that say it the Muslims this is the truth and this is what the, what's in the Quran this is the way of life that we as Muslims Really, we should show to others, not to show off with our actions, but this is our religion. This is the tawheed, this is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, this is something very beautiful that we need to understand and to reflect upon. And again, going back to the same subject, the subject of the names and attributes of Allah. Last week, we talked about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being al-Qadir, the one that is able to do all things. And if you remember, we used it in our acts of worship, the same thing with al-Kabir. We have to use these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our acts of worship. And again, reminding you of the question from last week, that uh, mention a dua, that you would use the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from uh, the one that is Al-Qadir, the one that has the power, or Al-Qadir or Al-Muqtadir, that we use it in our worship. So mention a dua supplication, where it's, this is from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that we would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his names, Al-Qadir, Al-Muqtadir, Al-Qadir It doesn't have to be with the same name But with the attribute mentioned in the dua Something that we should use Many times every day Because we make decisions all the time And it's mentioned in this beautiful dua When we're about to make a decision As it's mentioned also in the episode And for uh, this episode We have a question for you With regards to the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Kabir We mentioned in the beginning Verses in the Quran that uh, uh, talked about Al-Kabir, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Kabir. So how many verses in the Quran that the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Kabir is mentioned? And mention uh, some examples, two or three uh, examples from the Quran. There are six verses that talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being Al-Kabir. And uh, so again, the question is how many uh, verses in the Quran in which the name of Allah Al-Kabir uh, is mentioned? Uh, and give an example, one or two or three, whatever you can, inshallah ta'ala, how many verses? And for the previous week, right, so that we can benefit from uh, the answer of the question, we have the dua of al-istikhara, the dua of al-istikhara, that the Prophet sallam used to teach the Sahaba radiallahu anhum this dua, like he would teach them uh, a surah of the Quran, something that they would memorize all the time, because we make decisions a lot in our days and our nights and so on. So the dua that if you're about to make a decision, 
after praying two rak'ah other than the fard, not the fard salah, sunnah prayer, nafl prayer, after you finish the salah, you make the dua of al-istikhara, Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi'ilmik wa astakdiruka bi'qudratik. The second sentence in the dua that you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his power, you're asking for power from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you to do the right decision that would benefit your religion, your livelihood, and matters of this world, and so on. Uh, the dua of al-istikhara is uh, everywhere in the authentic books of hadith, something that we should, we can read as we said, you can read it from uh, a book or something like this after you finish your two rak'ah, and you make the dua like this till you memorize it, but something that we should really use it all the time, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to learn the fiqh and the understanding of this dua. And uh, for the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-kabir, or the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala, something again, it's a way of life, of the believers and something that we say all the time something that we need to reflect upon something that we should really humanity need to really understand this so that they don't keep on being in their state of arrogance and not humbling themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's a it's it's a very sad that people again as we said they're not reflecting upon this again the question because of the time how many verses in the Quran in which the name of Allah al-Kabir is mentioned give an example and try to answer that whether it's in Facebook or call us inshallah ta'ala and uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to really make us reflect upon this and to make us benefit and purify our hearts with the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because nothing is greater than the worship of Allah nothing is greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wala dhikrullahi akbar the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest over all things and we should see that effect in our ibadah, in our salah, in our relationships, in our goodness and manners and so on. So till next time, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you all and to make us among those who purify their hearts with the words of Allah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.